Hey, Josh Mahoney here, Chief Market Analyst at Scope Markets. Let's look ahead to the upcoming US CPI uh, inflation gauge and the FOMC meeting, both taking place on Wednesday, the 12th of June. And that certainly is going to grab the attention of markets uh, for the days ahead, despite the fact that we have also got the BOJ interest rate decision on Friday. Really, everyone's going to be focused on the US once again, coming off the back of a jobs report that absolutely blasted uh, above expectations, but really confused people because we'd spent much of the week looking at weak data points elsewhere. And suddenly when it came to the jobs report, we saw this bumper payrolls figure. Unfortunately, that came alongside a move towards the upside in terms of wages. So really, it did set back expectations around the potential for a rate cut in September. Um, but as is often the case, and bear in mind, this is something I alluded to when I was previewing uh, this jobs report. A lot of the time, what you see is a reaction to that initial move, uh, to that initial uh, headline number, and then people start to dig deeper. And when they dig deeper on this occasion, once again, it's those part-time roles that are really propping things up. And where we have seen over the course of 2024, a whole host of uh, sort of outperformance or sort of bigger than expected numbers in terms of payrolls, pretty much every single one has come alongside a big move higher in terms of part-time roles rather than full-time roles, which a lot of the time means double counting, uh, where people are taking on more than one job to essentially deal with the rampant inflation that has been in play over the past couple of years. So let's get into it. First and foremost, I want to take you through a whole host of different charts. These are the expectations from markets in terms of the core numbers expected to stay as is 0.3 on the monthly, 3.6 on the year on year. Um, but it gets a bit more interesting on the headline number, 0.1 expected this time round. So the lowest month on month figure for quite some time. But that's expected to keep the year on year figure at 3.4%. And that really is something that we have been talking about, you know, over recent months. So we get into this period where it's very difficult to even just stay still. But 3.4%, we're nowhere near that 2% target. And so we need to hit that 0.1 figure uh, to be able to just stay as we are. And if we don't, if we see a higher than 0.1 monthly figure, then, you know, maybe we start to see inflation on the rise once again. So here is a breakdown in terms of uh, a number of different inflation metrics in the US. What can we see? Well, PPI, most notably regaining ground of late. Elsewhere, you can see the likes of CPI pretty much flatlining for a while now. You can see that it's a core uh, CPI that really has been uh, gradually moving lower alongside that core PC. So the underlying inflation metrics, the ones that arguably the Federal Reserve can just say, well, we just focus on the core because we can't do anything about those more volatile elements. Well, those are the ones that have been moving towards the downside. But like I said, the expectation is that we're going to be flat this time. So do we see a similar kind of thing, right? We get to the mid threes, much like that headline CPI number uh, did, um, and just consolidate there. We don't necessarily see that downside move coming into play. Um, certainly, that is a risk. In terms of why we're expecting to see uh, that 0 0.1 reading in terms of the month on month number, this alludes to it, right? You can see this close resemblance between the month on month trajectory of inflation alongside the moves within the energy markets. This is crude oil overlaid on month on month US CPI. And so the declines that we have been seeing recently are essentially uh, the main part of why we're seeing inflation expected to come in at 0.1 this time around. It highlights the importance of keeping those energy prices low, because if that didn't happen and let's say oil had moved higher instead of lower, all of a sudden we'd be looking for a very significant move higher in terms of this headline number rather than keeping it flat. So really it's a fine balancing act at the moment, just trying to keep steady at the mid threes, let alone moving towards the upside. And you can see why we're seeing some sort of risk off play, uh, risk off moves coming into the markets, because if you're looking at strong payrolls numbers at a time when we're seeing the US struggle to even maintain inflation at mid 3% and the core numbers look like they're just going to start flatlining from here, uh, then, you know, the, the reasons for a potential uh, rate cut uh, are questionable. And you have to start looking at, you know, potential economic weakness to force the hand of the Federal Reserve instead. Here's the chart that I always provide to you guys in terms of my way of understanding uh, where we stand from an inflation perspective, 3.36 on the headline number. Uh, so essentially 3.4. You can see in terms of the figure that's going to be dropping out, it's a 0 0.1 one reading. And remember, we're expecting to see month on month inflation at 0 0.1. So you take one out, 
you put one back in, lo and behold, we've got flat inflation. That's why I highlighted the fact that, you know, if you look at recent months, you know, the past half a year, essentially, uh, we've seen inflation uh, tracking above where we want it to be on a month on month basis. Last month, we saw a second consecutive decline down to 0.313, but that's still well above the level that needs to be below 0.2 uh, needed to get back on target. 0.1 would be very welcome nonetheless. And I would, you know, feel uh, pretty emboldened by uh, a 0.1 reading. Certainly, if we can see some consecutive low readings, that would be uh, particularly important. But as we can see at the bottom in terms of the eight month annualized, you know, in, a, in say four months time, where are we going to be? Well, that's beyond September. So we're talking about the possibility of where do we stand where uh, when the Federal Reserve uh, come to make their decision? Well, we'll stand pretty much where we are at the moment, mid threes. Um, so nothing from an inflation perspective to tell the Fed that they've done their job. In terms of the core side of things, we can see here the breakdown in terms of core CPI and core PCE. Of course, this time around, we're looking at the CPI number. So the figure being stripped out is 0 0.2 from uh, June. Oh, no, I've got that one wrong. It's the May figure coming in. Uh, so we've actually got a pretty hefty number being uh, stripped out. So that points towards a possibility of a move towards the downside. Um, but by and large, you know, markets are expecting it to come in relatively flat. Maybe if we do see some, some sort of positive surprise it will come with a potential 0.1 tick lower in terms of the core uh, CPI number um, but nonetheless you can see we're entering this phase where month on month the June July August all coming in pretty much at 0.2 on a monthly basis same as October so the 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 bar has been set a lot higher or lower depending on how you look at it to be able to drive down inflation look at the numbers that are being stripped out previously, that's that 0 0.4, 0 0.5 April number, the 0 0.3 May number. Those numbers give us the grounds for a potential move lower. And if you look at the figures that we've been seeing recently, the last one, 0 0.3, the figure prior to that, around about 0 0.35. So we have been tracking above where we need to be. And once those base effects, the favorable base effects to strip down and you start getting into more difficult base effects, which essentially we're going to have next month, you know, that's when the disinflation essentially ends. And so mid threes, that's where inflation is going to stay in terms of core CPI uh, and headline CPI. And so, again, it's PCE, which really shows the potential uh, to give us some hope, 275 for that figure but then once again like i said june july august october november you know really low month on month figures or certainly sub 0.2 percent and we haven't seen that for a while since december for the pce numbers so again i don't necessarily see any grounds for optimism around a potential move back down to target here is a breakdown in terms of the us core pce and uh, number but uh, core CPI, sorry, um, but highlighting uh, the importance of shelter, because if you look at the top section here, that the core excluding shelter, we're pretty much back down to target. And this does give some grounds for uh, optimism for, for some. Uh, the reason being that the shelter component is massive, but relatively lagging in nature. And so if the shelter component's moving in the right trajectory, then people can say, well, look, we're pretty much but at Target, if you take out the shelter component, it's such a massive waiting, you know, so we just need to know that shelter's on track. Well, we have seen things picking up actually over 2024. If you see that three month percent of change of shelter uh, above that pre pandemic range, but dropping down last month. So hopefully we see that uh, declining once again to get back down towards that sort of pre pandemic uh, three month uh shelter change figure but certainly shelter is an absolutely key component and we need to see that driving down uh, to be able to really drive uh, the core reading back down towards target but if you strip out that shelter metric we're actually at target so you know there's always a different way of looking at this data now bear in mind of course we've seen the u.s jobs report we saw a bumper payrolls number we saw an increase in terms of unemployment but also an increase in terms of the wage figure and so all of that put together puts people in a little bit more of a doubtful mood when it comes to the federal reserve and you can see that here we've only just started to see it filtering through in terms of market expectations but growing confidence all of a sudden around the potential for September to not see a rate cut, uh, still uh, just about 
the primary uh, outcome for them to cut rates by 25 basis points. Um, but you can see here, pretty significant, you know, I would say, what's that, something like 47%. Uh, so it's moving into a coin toss territory for September. And you can see exactly why. And we've covered it for, for months now, talking about how, you know, the Fed's going to have to cut interest rates against the trend in terms of inflation because inflation is likely to be moving higher in the lead up to the September meeting. In terms of December, essentially, where are we going to be by year end? That's another way that people are looking at it. You can see that this latest jobs report has seen an increase in the outlier event in terms of potentially we won't see any rate cuts this year. That's around about a 10% chance now. We've also seen a bump in terms of the idea that we just see one and a decline in terms of the potential for three rate cuts. So all of that really taken together gives upside in terms of the US dollar, weakness in terms of sentiment for equity markets and a general risk off tone into play. So where are we going to stay move? Where are we going to stand moving into this meeting? Well, bear in mind, we've got the CPI numbers. We've also got the Federal Reserve coming out with their latest commentary. That's going to give us greater clarity. We're not going to see anything in terms of cuts to the interest rates. That That is pretty much uh, a done deal. But the outlook and the forecasts will be interesting. Of course, we have seen inflation moving flatlining, moving a little bit upwards. So that raises question marks on whether they're going to increase their forecast for inflation. That would be bad for markets. Uh, how are things looking from a growth perspective? Growth's been pulling back as well. So weaker growth since their last forecasts, higher inflation. Uh, that points towards the possibility of a somewhat downbeat assessment from the Federal Reserve. And that brings question marks on what it's going to do for markets. So let's jump to it. First and foremost, we'll look at the dollar index. And bear in mind, if you don't want to trade the dollar index itself, you can, of course, try to gauge what's the currency I think is going to be strongest. What's the currency I think is going to be weakest? And then to try to put them together, because, of course, currencies come in pairs. And as we see here, a strong rebound here in terms of the US dollar index coming off the back of a protracted period of downside that pulled us back down to 104 support. Now, if we go into the weekly time frame, we can see here. So we you could say, look, we're just pretty much range bound over this period. But in actual fact, if you look at this trend, we have got this creation of higher lows time and time again. And that points towards the near term pullback as being a potential higher low before the bulls come back into play. The daily time frame shows you this sort of stepped move lower that we have been seeing. And we don't necessarily know exactly where this retracement is going to come into, just that it looks kind of like a retracement. Uh, and so you can see that we've pulled back pretty much into that 61.8 fib, which tallies up with these lows that we have here from early April. So could this be the end of that pullback and the beginning of that next uh, surge for this market? Well, certainly if we see a move through 105, 184, that would likely embolden the bulls here for the US dollar and point towards a rebound coming into play. Certainly if we see an upgrade in terms of inflation expectations, a downgrade in terms of growth expectations, if we see inflation coming in flat or higher than expected in terms of the year on year numbers, all the kind of things that could really concern markets and boost havens such as the US dollar index. On the flip side, gold has started to come under pressure. Now, gold is the kind of thing that does well typically when we're seeing uh, the prospect of monetary easing as we were getting closer to that. We saw the, the value of gold uh, really gaining traction. Now, there's also a caveat here, and that is that we've heard the news uh, on Friday, the 7th, this is, that the PBOC has essentially halted uh, its Gold purchases, that comes after 18 consecutive months of gold purchases. Question marks about whether a major source of demand is gone. That has been responsible for a lot of the downside that we've seen so, so far. Uh, but then we saw the jobs report and that just uh, poured fuel on the fire, so to speak. So back down into this key support level, which tallies up with the 61.8, oh, sorry, 76.4 FIB. So really interesting area of support here that if we break through it, which is at 2314 at the moment, points towards a possibility of a move back down to this 2280 level. And certainly that, you know, if we break through that, that's when we look like we could see a wider pullback coming into play for gold. Uh, but as you see here, we've seen this wider pullback into the 76.4 fib. We started to regain ground. Now we've seen a sort of deluge of uh, reasons to sell gold today, be it PBOC or, or the job support. Now we're selling off into that 76.4 fib. So let's see how that holds up or doesn't. If it doesn't, 
then it's a case of watching to see a potential move back down into this key support level of 22. Let's get it more accurately. 22.77 uh, for gold, but certainly really falling out of favor today. Sharp selling uh, pressure coming into play. And really, if we were to see, you know, stronger CPI data, interest rate cuts being held off for longer, we're likely to see dollar strength. And the inverse of that would be likely weakness in terms of gold, as we're seeing playing out at the moment. In terms of the S&P 500, you've thankfully got the likes of NVIDIA to help things along. It's been uh, one of the main reasons why we've seen the S&P 500 performing so well recently. Now, when you've got such a bullish trend, generally, people will often just buy the dip when we see any sort of decent pullback. And that has happened thus far. We saw initial selling pressures. Now it's already starting to rebound. We could see further downside, certainly if we were to see that inflation gauge uh, sort of disappoint in terms of uh, potentially moving higher or or um, flatlining in terms of the year on year numbers, which is pretty much expected. But, you know, Certainly, if we were to see an upside move, bear in mind, we're relying on a 0.1 monthly figure for it to flatline. If that was to happen, we could see a wider pullback to come into play. But certainly, look, you've got a bullish trend in play. We're habitually hitting record highs. At some point, we're likely to pull back because markets don't move in straight lines. But if we do, we're looking at a likely retracement of the rally up from uh, this recent swing low, which is back down here at 51.91. So we'll be looking at that as a sort of retracement phase. And then you just have to start looking at the shape and trying to gauge where that retracement comes into because you don't ever know. You might be a shallow retracement, mid-size, deep retracement. And so it's a case of tracking that intraday chart to follow exactly that. But at the moment, initial selling pressure being regained. Um, but, you know, certainly I think there's uh, the potential for this to perhaps not hit record highs and possibly start to roll over a little bit more as we head in towards a crucial week that is going to be dominated by inflation, which looks unlikely to encourage people too much. And the FOMC, who, you know, coming off the back of a strong jobs number and off the back of the inflation gauge earlier in the day, which is either likely to flatline or move higher. I don't necessarily think we're going to see the Federal Reserve coming out with too much of a, a, a dovish stance, but maybe they do. Certainly volatility ahead. Um, but this has been a pretty jittery Friday, to say the least. Uh, plenty for traders to sink their teeth into. But like I've been highlighting for the best part of, you know, four months, five months, maybe longer, you know, inflation in the US is a problem. And it's probably going to show that once again, uh, midweek, in particular with the core numbers, because the core numbers have been declining, but that could be set to come to an end, uh, despite uh, the helping hand provided by weak energy prices, which could help keep that headline number flat. Uh, it seems the disinflation pathway could be over for the time being.